To produce a professional podcast, the DAW you use or the digital audio workstation could make all the difference. You want something that's powerful, flexible, and hopefully doesn't cost a fortune. That's why today we're gonna to be discussing my personal favorite, Reaper. One of the most underrated DAWs on the market today. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Podcast Pro Tips, episode 20. My name's Quinn, and today we're gonna to be discussing Reaper. In my opinion, it's one of the most flexible and affordable programs that any podcaster or even producer could be using in 2025. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos, and without further delay, let's dive in. So, why use Reaper? As you may or may not know, there are tons of DAWs to pick from out there in the world today. But here are some of the reasons why I think Reaper is the best. First off, it's incredibly affordable. Many programs will force you into a monthly subscription cost or the flat rate to buy the program is super expensive. In Reaper's case, you can buy the entire program for $60. Yes, six, zero, that's it. You get a full-fledged audio workstation without getting locked into a monthly subscription or paying hundreds of dollars for a license. This is great for small production teams or independent podcasters who want to have a full audio suite without paying full audio suite pricing. Another advantage is just how flexible Reaper is. You can completely customize your editing layout, the actual aesthetic or theme of the program, set up custom hotkeys or macros to minimize how much time it'll take to do repetitive tasks, and create shortcuts to fit your unique workflow. When it comes to themes, if you're someone who uses Fruity Loops or Pro Tools or even Cubase, there are tons of skins that you can download online, simply install them and boom, Reaper now looks and even functions like one of those programs. If you've ever felt restricted by how rigid some other programs can be, Reaper is a breath of fresh air. A pro tip here for podcasters is that if you're editing a podcast and you find yourself doing something a lot, in our case, that might be selecting and deleting breaths or bringing the volume down on them. In just a few clicks, I can set up a hotkey and with a single button, achieve that same result. Trust me, it doesn't sound like a lot, but over the course of a year, you're saving yourself hours of your life. As a podcast producer and an audio engineer myself, Reaper gives you the same high functionality that many professional DAWs would give you. And I know, I'm trained in a few of them. The editing tools alone are very lightweight and fast inside of Reaper. So whether you're editing multiple tracks at once, strip silencing, cleaning up background noise, or even processing with some of its onboard plugins, it really can do it all. But not only that, it has full support of third-party plugins. So if you're coming to Reaper from another program, you can just bring your entire toolkit with you. If that's not enough, Reaper also has cross-platform compatibility. So whether you're on a Mac, Windows, or even Linux, and if you're working with a team who tends to have either Macs or PCs, None of that becomes an issue if you're using Reaper. You can easily collaborate with different team members like we do here at The Podcast Consultant, regardless of what operating system they use. Also, while Reaper is designed as an audio program, you can even use it to do basic video edits. Reaper will let you cut and sync video without having to jump to another program. I've even used Reaper to score movies or do sound design for documentaries. I just load the scene in, pull up my sound library, and start building right inside of Reaper. So, sounds great. But is there a catch? While Reaper is incredibly powerful, it might have a bit more of a learning curve than some of the other programs out there that are designed specifically for beginners. The interface can feel a little bit overwhelming, especially if you're coming to Reaper from a program like GarageBand or even Audacity. But with a little time and effort, you can unlock an incredibly fast workflow and tailor it specifically to your needs. There are tons of resources available online that can help you learn to do pretty much anything you need to do on Reaper. And there's a very active community of users on the Reaper website that you can engage with on the forums or even ask a question if you're feeling stuck. Here's another pro tip. If you're going to be producing your podcast inside of Reaper, definitely take the time to build an episode template. This way, every time you record a new episode, all you do is open your template, drag and drop in the interview, and you're pretty much good to go. Having a preset structure for your episodes, as well as pre-recorded production elements like your intros, your outros, and your music already assembled and faded, it's gonna save you a lot of time. So obviously I champion Reaper, but maybe you're looking for alternatives. Here are some other programs you might want to check out instead. Hindenburg Pro is one we recommend, and it's very intuitive for journalists and podcast editors. It simplifies spoken word editing and levels your audio automatically, making it perfect for newcomers. Another program that we use a lot at the Podcast Consultant is Descript. 
This program's great because you can just upload your audio recording, your interview, or even a video file, and it'll transcribe the entire thing for you. Then, when it comes to making your edits, all you do is edit the Word doc. That said, definitely export the final edit and listen back to it, because sometimes the cuts it make can be a little jarring to listen to. And lastly, tried and true, there is GarageBand. This is a free program for any Mac user out there. If you're just getting started and don't need any advanced features and just want somewhere where you can open a program, hit record and capture your audio, GarageBand would be a great fit. So is Reaper going to be the best fit for your podcast production workflow? Here are a couple closing thoughts. If you're concerned about cost, Reaper has pretty much everyone in the market beat. For a one-time fee of $60, you get access to a full production suite without getting locked into a monthly subscription. As I mentioned, it is fully customizable from how it looks to how it functions. If you're the type of person that likes to fine tune your workflow, then Reaper's flexibility will be hard to beat. And it has a bunch of pro level tools that work just as well as higher priced programs. And it works on Windows, Mac, or Linux. So you're not tied to just one operating system. There are tons of us here at the podcast consultant who swear by Reaper. But as fun as all that might sound, if you're not too concerned about becoming an audio engineer overnight or even care to edit or produce your own podcast, you can always book a free discovery call with us here at the podcast consultant in the link below. We would love to see if we could be a good fit for you and support you on your podcast journey. What program do you use to edit your podcast? If you're a Reaper champion, let me know in the comments. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out our other videos where we have tons of pro tips to help you as you step into or improve your existing podcast. That's all from me today. Thanks for watching and happy recording.